Cash, thank you uh, for joining me today on Pop Culture Unplugged. Uh, thanks for having me, Elias. Uh, great. Uh, you know, I've been looking forward to this chat. You know, the listeners, the viewers can see you on Tulsa King. And they can see you in the wrestling world, man. You've been – your career, man, it's been going up the last few weeks. A lot of talk about you and your character. Well, you know what? Um, you know, that's a testament to the writing there, those guys. It's, uh, you know, yeah, my job is to try and give it a little bit of life, but, you know, they they knew what they wanted. So, you know, I'm, I'm just happy to be a part of it. You know, what a what an amazing opportunity for somebody like me, for sure. Great. Did you see that article? I wanted to start off with this. Did you see the article about how Bigfoot might be the best character in season two? I've read a few articles here and there, you know, you get, you get to the point where you don't, you know, necessarily read a lot of that stuff or look at a lot of that stuff. You know, that's pretty amazing though. Like I said, that's a testament to those writers, you know, mm -hmm. they, they knew exactly what they wanted to put out there. You know, I think the character fits really well in, in the, you know, in the wild and zany crew that, that the white has out there. And, you know, I, I'm just glad to be a part of it. So, yeah, uh, let's start off with, uh, you know, some background uh, stuff with you, too. You know, professional wrestler. Was wrestling always the dream or was it acting always the dream and that you wanted to start off in wrestling? How did that happen? Well, you know what, uh, Elias, I, I think they go hand in hand. You know, uh, professional wrestling is 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 theater. You know, it really is. It's, it's more of a physical uh, one take type of theater, but um, it, it, that's what it is. And. You know, I think you get to a certain point in professional wrestling, you know, the physical part kind of takes its toll. And, it, mm. and, you know, if if this if that is truly what you want to do, I think it's a natural evolution to um, professional wrestling. You know, you get into TV, you get into, you know, movies, you know, we're you know, we like to entertain. So if that's what you like to do, that's, you know, that's kind of a natural evolution of it. Yeah. What made you fall in love with wrestling? I don't know. Cause I'm an old school, you know, I'm talking about like Roddy Piper, Ric Flair, those type of days. Hey, I, look, I'm even older school. I'm, I'm seventies, dusty roads. I'm okay. Stan Hansen. I'm Bruiser Brody, uh, Wahoo McDaniel. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pre nature boy, you know, Ric Flair type stuff. So I, it, it was always on around my house. You know, I, I grew up around grandparents and it was always on around my house. And, and that is, it's just something that I always saw myself doing. How many years have you doing wrestling? Since 1997. Wow. Uh, so 27 years. Mm. Yeah, 27 years. Yeah. I mean, I'm you still going, still going strong. Still do a television well, yeah. program every week. Yeah, I saw that. You know, you're you're huge in the indie scene. Also, uh, was do you enjoy that more? The indie scene compared to like, you know, things like WWE or, you know, now we have AEW, TNA and all that stuff. There are a lot of, there are a lot of uh, boundaries when you work for a company the size of, of WWE or yeah. uh, AEW. There are a lot of boundaries. They put a lot of restraints on what you can do and what you can't do. Um, and I always told myself, you know, and, and, you know, this sounds kind of odd, but I've always told myself I would much rather build something somewhere with a, a good group of guys as opposed to going somewhere that's already built and then just lending a hand. Mm. You know, it, it's much more gratifying to build something as opposed to, you know, be a part of something, you know, it's, it's just much more gratifying. And, you know, when when I first came to OVW, that's that's what I that that was a plan. I wanted to build something. Have I had opportunities to do extra work and stuff like that at those places? Yes, I have. Have I taken them a lot? No. no. You know, it's just it, uh, I feel there's much more freedom out on the yeah. indies to do what it is that that you want to do and how you want to create. And you know, I've I've just been there. Yeah. And what's great about the indies too? You know, I don't want to stick too much with wrestling, but the great thing about the indies is like. Even when you're watching, like the, you know, the big outlets like WWE, and you, and you see that huge indie wrestler, everybody sh knows it shows up. The crowd goes crazy with those guys. Uh, the the adrenaline rush on a good independent wrestling show is second to none. Not to mention, it's it's much more uh, intimate. It's much more usually a, a much more intimate setting. You know, you don't have you're not necessarily in arenas the size of stadiums where it houses 50 60 000 people and mm -hmm. you know you're so far away from the people that it's it's not 
real intimate. You just have to, you have to go to perform and then you go home and in independent wrestling. It's different. It's a very intimate setting. There's nothing like it. There, there really isn't. There is definitely a place in pop culture for independent wrestling. Right. Right. How many more years do you think I left on you? For wrestling? Uh, you know what? I couldn't tell you that Elias, you know, that's something that your body tells you right now. My body feels good. Yeah, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. You know, once it, once it says, Hey, it's time to go. Guess what? It's time mm -hmm. to go. So you've been wrestling for so many years. What made you do the next step now to jump into the acting world? Opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that that's one thing in wrestling. That's, that's how you get by. You learn to recognize opportunities. And, and if you don't take them, yeah. a lot of times you don't get second chances. And that opportunity presented itself. Um, you know, it started with uh, the documentary wrestlers that was on yeah, Netflix. Okay. You know, it, it turned into something much more. Uh, my agent said, hey, they want to know if you want to read for this. You know, what am I going to say? Right. I'm definitely, right. Not, I'm definitely not going to tell Mr. Stallone no. <laughs> there you he, go. He gets what he wants. And mm. he, 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 he wanted a Bigfoot. He got a Bigfoot. Yeah. Any like challenges like you faced while making the shift from like wrestling ring camera now being on TV camera, or do you feel like you were very comfortable with that? I was very comfortable with that. Very comfortable being in front of a camera. It's a, uh, you know, it, it, I've been doing it so long. It's it's kind of become natural for me. Mm -hmm. The uncomfortability came with you know the the people that surrounded me. You know that was a little. You know that was a that was a lot to take in. You know, those guys, those guys are, are, they're, they're huge stars, you know, just the opportunity to get, get to work with, with, you know, Sylvester Stallone and Neil McDonough, Frank Grillo, you know, Garrett Hedlund, Jay Will, Max Casella. I mean, all those guys, Annabella Ciora, Tatiana, all those guys, man, all those guys are, are, are stars and, you know, it, it, it but you get used to it, you know, mm -hmm. and they made me feel so at home. They felt, they made me feel like a part of the crew and, it it was it, it was a time it was a time how, how did the opportunity come up for, for you to read for bigfoot did somebody saw you somewhere and said hey let's bring this guy in like what was the story behind that well um I, i've had an acting agent i've been going out for roles for several years um okay. and the wrestlers netflix thing hit and what i was told i i get the email that that uh, a, a show wants to know if cash flow will read these lines. Okay. I read the lines. I didn't hear nothing. I finally heard something and they tell me, Hey, you got the job. Um, if you get a phone call from some, from, from somebody, you know, that you don't recognize it'd be best to, to pick it up. And it happened mm -hmm. to be Sylvester Stallone. Wow. And he, he tells me, Hey, you know, I, I saw this 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 documentary on Netflix. You know, I want you a part of my crew, and you know, like I said, I'm yeah. That 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 opportunity is is amazing, and I said I'm in. I'm all in. Let's do it. When do you need me? Right, that's awesome, and it's great too because like I wrote down here, you know, Bigfoot has become quickly a fan favorite. Like, how do you feel about like the audience reaction now with all this and your character? Hey, you know, um, it, it's good exposure all the way around. You know, it's yeah. it, it's good for me. You know, it's been a bit overwhelming, you know, for sure. But, you know, when when you get into stuff like this, you know, that's kind of what you sign up for. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm taking it in stride and and, you know, I, I appreciate everybody, you know, liking the character. You know, it, it, it really is a good character. I, I think the character of Bigfoot you know, is tailor made for a role in a show like that, you know, because mm -hmm. of the, the, the conundrum, you know, he, he's a big guy, he looks brutal, but you know, his, his personality is written to where he's, you know, nice mm -hmm. and secure and polite. Yeah. You know, I, I think that fits really well with the themes of, of Tulsa King. Like I said, the writers in that are amazing. Mm -hmm. The writers in that are amazing. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just happy to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Did you get a description of what the character of Bigfoot was supposed to be like? And did you, like, when you read it, were you like, oh, yeah, I can do this. Just let me jump right in. Did you feel like that? Um, I did feel like that. I didn't really get a description of the character. Okay. Um, I just kind of put my own, you know, I because, you know, they say in, in acting, every character has a little bit of yourself in it. Yeah. And 
I think that kind of shone through in the character and in the the parts that that Bigfoot has that they wrote for Bigfoot, you know. But I think they did that on purpose. You know, they mm -hmm. seen who I was, they seen how that goes, and 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 they wanted me to portray that. You know, like I said, that that character was written; it, it fits very well in, in in Tulsa King and in that crew. Mm -hmm. Did Stallone give you any pointers or any tips about this character? What he wanted oh, to see out of you? He's amazing to work with. That guy's amazing to work with. You know, he he's 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 super creative. Uh, he's he's constantly working. How that man has all that energy, I have no idea. But you know, every time we had scenes together, he's you know, hey, you know, maybe can you do this or can you do that or you know, maybe you should do this. You know, don't break eye contact. I mean, he's he's constantly mentoring you because he has this vision that he yeah. wants to see and. You know, he's he's super focused on that vision and he knows what to say to somebody or, you know, how to to, to guide somebody to get there to read what it is mm. that, that he wants to see. I mean, it's it, you know, it, it was constant. It was a constant relationship. You know, it, it was definitely a mentorship. And, you know, you can't beat that. Right. You really right. Can't beat that. That's awesome. What can fans expect from Bigfoot? journey pretty much in season two i know you you don't want to tell us too much you know like what can you tease about us about this guy <laughs> well I, I can't really give too much let's just say <laughs> bigfoot is there because they need a hand okay yeah. maybe not so much physically maybe you know maybe they need a you know a, a, a smile here and there but i what you can expect from bigfoot is he's going to do what he's hired to do. And I, I think I'll just leave it at that. Bigfoot is going to be there and he is going to do what he's hired to do. I watched the last episode. Uh, you, you, we didn't see you that much. Are, are we expecting you more bigger role throughout the season? We'll see hey, more look, of you. What, you. what you saw is what I saw, you okay. know, how, how they, you know, I know what I've done on set, how they yeah. portray that. You know, that is entirely up to them. I'm just like you and just like the rest of the world. I'm going to be watching. I'm going to be yeah. watching Tulsa King season two. And, you know, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how they, uh, you know, I'll see how we'll see how Bigfoot. Um, you know, how Bigfoot yeah. is yeah. portrayed as, as as we go along. Yeah. I had Tatiana on a couple of weeks ago. She said the same thing. She goes, they, we film a lot, but then sometimes you watch it and a lot of things get cut out. You don't know what you're going to see throughout these episodes. You don't, and, that, and that's true. You know, and first couple I've I, I've seen you know parts like that. You know, you don't know if where they're going to put stuff, how you know what they're going to. Yeah. You just you just don't know, and you're watching, and you're expecting to see a good show. And and I, I've you know I love the first season of Tulsa King, and I, I love this right. season of Tulsa King. You know, I'm I'm watching it just like everybody else. You know, yeah. is there a specific episode that you can't wait for the viewers to watch? Like we're getting they're a tenor. All I know they're all good, but a specific all, one. With... Nah, I, I, I because I, I'm a fan of stories. I'm a, okay. You know, whether it be the the, the wrestling part of me, I'm a fan yeah. of stories. I yeah. like the complete story, you know. And that doesn't change, you know. That doesn't change even though I'm in it. You know, I'm a fa I'm a fan of the story. I'm 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 amped up to see where, you know, the the final episode. You know, I'm yeah. that's where the story culminates. Episode nine and episode ten. I'm amped up to see how those play out. And mm -hmm. it it's going to be good, you know, you know, getting to talk to the, the, the writers, you know, Terry Winters, getting to talk to directors, Craig Zisk, you yeah. know, Josh Morrison, Greg, uh, I, you know, I have no doubt they're going to make Tulsa King season two. Uh, it's already a smash, but it's just, it's going to. Oh yeah, definitely. They're already talking about season three. I saw this, Talon was talking about it in one of his uh, posts. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that too, I think. Yeah. Well, uh, I want to end this by, I saw one of the Facebook groups on Tulsa King. Somebody wrote, I don't know how you feel about this. We need we need a Bigfoot spinoff to see his journey continue on with something else. Mm. Well, that would be, hey, the Bigfoot character is, is it, it can be a, a dynamic character. You know, right. there's a lot going on there that's not being said. You know, why does he like to be called Bigfoot and not his name? You know, where did yeah. he come from? You know, he's from Kentucky. How did he end up out West with his cousin, Mitch? There is a lot to be explored there. Mm. I, you know, I, I would be totally open to that. I, I think it would be a, a compelling story to tell.
Mm-hmm. And he likes egg whites. Do what? And he likes egg whites too. Now, from what I heard, he likes everything. Yeah. <laughs> <There you laughs> Amazing. Cash. Uh, what's next for you? Any, anything else that you could promote about that you want to talk about? And I know we have Tulsa King, we have wrestling, anything else that uh, you could tell us? I, I'm, I'm up in Louisville. I'm, you know, I've got several projects, you know, that I'm working on. You know, I do these television programs for OVW, you know, whenever I can. I'm, I'm out on the road. I'm doing appearances. You know, I'm working, working you know, yeah. working just like just like, you know, everybody else trying to stay busy, you know. And, you yeah. know, I, I'm, I'm a dad and I'm a husband, too. So, you know, you juggle you juggle that. It's just you know, it's a lot. Just, I get it. I get it. I got two lot. kids myself. You, you keep going. You keep plugging. I mean, that's. That's been kind of my story, you know, it's the grind. So, you know, awesome. busy, busy. And, and, you know, and if I have anything super big coming out, I promise everybody will know about it. Amazing. Cash, let's end ends us by uh, how can the listeners, the viewers find your social media, keep up with you. You've been posting about wrestling. You've been posting Tulsa King. Hey, all my social medias are the same. They're all at cash flow wrestler. My YouTube is at cash flow wrestler. You can find them all on there. Um, you can go to if, if you're looking for any cool cash flow swag, soon to be some, you know, maybe some Bigfoot swag, but you can go there to chopstopwrestling.com. You know, you can find some cool shirts and some other stuff on there. You know, there look you me go. up. There you go. Cash, I want to thank you for giving you a minute. Let's hopefully we see you season three and uh, we'll get you back on. We'll continue on the story. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you, Elias. You too. Thank you.